Hello everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and today's video is my April bullet journal spread. So of course I'm going to start off by lighting the candle to set the atmosphere and make the apartment just smell a little nicer and seem a little brighter. I ended up getting some new pens for my bullet journal as my regular pen died partway through the last one and I didn't have any other pens in the house that didn't like horrendously bleed through or just stop working. So I went and bought new gel pens. For April's theme, I decided to do a beehive or just bee hexagonal spring spread. I chose to do this spread because like I said, it's a very spring vibes spread and so I thought it was very fitting for the season because at the beginning of the month it's supposed to be a little warmer and all the snow should hopefully be melted um, but also because this is my husband Brennan's birthday month and he is a beekeeper and he doesn't currently have any bees but he has in the past and he will in the future much to my dismay so this is also kind of in honor of him and his birthday with all the bees so again, the title page is a little plain, but I like it. And our first spread is the calendar spread. I always have this as my first spread, just so it can kind of capture everything in the month. I can write all of my notes of readathons happening and when books are coming out and uh, planning for videos, when to start vlogs, etc., so forth and on and on. So. I always start and I like my calendar to take up two pages so I can have plenty of space on each day to write as many things as I need to and not have it be super cramped and super messy. And I always have a notes section on the left hand side as well just for anything either for next month's bullet journal or something more month long or just general ideas that aren't necessarily assigned to a day or week. So then next I have my TBR page and I thought it'd be very fun to do play off of a TBR jar. So a lot of people do TBR jars for readathons or just their regular month to month TBR. Um, and jars of honey are pretty popular and well known. So I decided to do a TBR jar of honey. So I have my six jars all with varying levels of honey, both to make it interesting but also to put top priorities with the fullest jar and then lower priorities with the lowest jar just to kind of have less pressure because I am a mood reader so it's very unlikely that I will read all of these books, if any. Uh, so I thought it would be very fun to have different levels of honey in each of the TBR jars. I don't like to do more than six month books for the month. Uh, as I said, I'm a mood reader and doing too many books can be daunting and then it puts me in a slump, uh, but not having any books doesn't really help give me a direction when I am doing an audiobook um, and I don't really have as much choice to mood read with audiobooks.
Then I changed it up and decided to have all of my readathon specific pages after the TBR rather than later on in the spread. I think it helps to see what books are for what readathon specifically, and if I have books for a TBR for a readathon that aren't on my general TBR, then I can have them all together so I can see all the books I want to read, even if it's not all on one page. So this first readathon here is the Spring Fling Aween. This is hosted by Olivia Reads a Latte. I didn't put in any of the information at the moment. I was going to do it later. Um, but then the second readathon that I'm participating in is actually the one that I'm hosting, the Continuathon. It's happening from April 2 to 15, and it's all about continuing or finishing the series. Um, I will link my announcement video, also my TBR video has already gone up for it. So this is just the official page for that readathon. Uh, why did I put it second when it's happening first? I don't know, probably because it's all I'm thinking about in my spare time, so when I open my bullet journal I need to see the other readathon so I don't forget about it and I can plan for it, maybe, or maybe it just happened that way. So I always have the prompts, my TBR, the books that I read, and then if there are social media prompts or badges or whatever else that is unique to that readathon. And then I have it with the books read spread after that and then this way I can see at first my TBR then the readathons and then what books I read again to have them close to the readathons that I read them for but also close to my TBR so I can still compare I decided to do a little bee house um, like what beekeepers have what my husband had so this was pretty fun and I can always add more drawers if I read more books than lines I have on the hive although I highly doubt that I've been having some pretty good reading months, but I never want to jinx it. And then next up I have my rankings page. This is a page that is purely for the last day of the month, and I am very excited for when I've completed a year of this, so that I can actually go back and see my top three ranking books of each month, and it will hopefully help me decide what my favorite book of the year was, and then also the worst book of the month. So I've got flowers as the top. I've got that little honey wand thingy as the second one in case you couldn't tell what that was because my art skills are abysmal. And then some good more hexagons for the third best. And then I decided to do a traditional beehive for the worst because I am actually afraid of bees. I, I very much appreciate what they do for the planet and I love them but from a distance. I don't actually like them. So beehives are some of the scariest things to me and so that's why it is the worst the symbol for the worst book that month. Moving on, I have my books to buy spread. This is another one that I do every month that is very particular to my situation. I have a $20 book budget every month, and so I have a whole spread devoted to what books I want to buy this month, next month, and the month after, just as brainstorming. And then I've already moved on to the other spread, which is just for the month of April. So this is keeping track of what books are coming out in the second half of the year. This is for a video idea, but also just for me to keep track of like what books are coming out. Again, I wanted the spread close to my what books I want to buy so I can see what's coming out in the next couple of months. Do I want to buy it over something backlisted that I've wanted to buy? So. This is kind of getting back into my more structured boxy type of spread, but because it's a like twice a year thing, it doesn't need to be super important, but it will be very used. On the next page starts all of my social media tracking. So my first social media that I plan and track for is YouTube and I decided to do a much less structured uh, layout than what I've done in the past rather than doing a whole bunch of boxes. I thought it'd be more fun and more thematic to just kind of have it be more open space. So I've got a flower with little bees to accent and some grass around the brainstorming area. But every leaf I'm going to write in the date of the video and then around the leaf I'm going to write my video idea. 
and on the next page it's a little more structured but I still try to keep it thematic for my Instagram I post three times a week and so I have three sunflowers for every week and that's just where I brainstorm I also do keep track of growth on all of my platforms just to as I try new things, do new things, how does that affect my growth and the people that I talk to and the friends that I make because that is ultimately what this is all about for me. Um, but so YouTube and Instagram are fairly similar. Oh, let me tell you, doing these uh, sunflowers, the yellow all around the black pen, it made me afraid for my marker a little bit and it was very tedious. Like it's sped up so it doesn't look that bad, but man, as I was doing it, I was like, oh my word, I couldn't, I should have just done different colors rather than just doing a whole field of sunflowers. But I thought sunflowers would be fun and a great way to brighten the page, even though it turns out this is a very light colored spread and I love it. Then finally, I actually combined uh, Twitter and TikTok to one page because both of them previously had their own independent page and there's just a lot of negative space, nothing was being used, so I felt like it was a waste, so I decided to put them on one page and just make them look nice and again, let there be a little more open space for all of my brainstorming rather than try and cram everything into boxes because that just doesn't always work for me. So here's the final flip through. I have to say, I am very satisfied with how this turned out. Uh, I was able to use a stencil for a lot of the hexagons, which is why it looks as neat as it is. Uh, I love all the colors. It's very bright and very springy and very thematic, and it just makes me happy, and it's probably one of the cleanest spreads I've ever had. So hopefully I can keep this artistic momentum going in all of my future spreads, but we'll see about that. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you keep a bullet journal what some of your themes are and maybe if you have any suggestions of what I should do for May. Otherwise, I post on Sundays and Wednesdays, so feel free to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I do upload both times those weeks. And I also have, as you may know, a bunch of bookish social media linked down below, so feel free to follow me there and I will most likely follow you back and we can be friends. So. Until I see you in the next video, I wish you happy reading.